Okay, so Pi News episode 55, and for this I'm using my Pi 400 with uh, Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit using the KDE desktop. And before I start the news, I wanted to mention about this KDE desktop. Now, I usually search for apps by pressing the Windows key and then start typing. So if I started typing Imager, it would come up. But uh, I found out by accident that if you just start typing without pressing anything at all, you get this menu as well, which also launches and searches for things. So if I was to type in, say, for instance, Gparted, this was the best ever feature for me on Windows 8, was that when you're on that multi-tile screen, if you start typing, you get access to the apps. And it's available on, uh, I've got it on my iPad, where I slide down and then start typing. But I just think it's a really quick and easy way of getting into applications, and I really like it. So first up, still talking about the Pi 400. Vital Spark contacted me about fitting an M.2 drive into a Raspberry Pi 400. And a lot of people have asked for this, and uh, a lot of people really don't like the SD card slot. I like the fact that the SD card slot is there, but obviously SSD and M.2, you get much, much better performance. So there's a whole thread on here for SSD inside a Pi 400. And you can see this is one of the longer M.2 drives, and there's various different bits of information in here. A neater solution here than my SSD drive, a little USB adapter with M.2 on it, and then you can start to see uh, some cutting going on here with the heatsink because this M.2 drive actually fits inside the Pi 400. Now, M.2 drives do generate a reasonable amount of heat, so I'm wondering if that will affect the thermals on the Pi 400, but I really do like the project and I like the way it looks. So you can see here, soldered on, and here with the USB A cable going inside and there it is neatly cut out for the heatsink and there's another bit on here uh, so someone else has done something similar uh, so the finished masterpiece stuffing an SSD inside the Raspberry Pi and again a bit more cutting to the heatsink and a little bit of sanding down for the pin that was there but I'll put a link to both threads if you're interested in doing this or you just want to know a bit more about it now next up was quite a big story uh, on the Raspberry Pi official site, so production and supply chain update from Eben Upton. As you will have noticed, it can be hard to buy a Raspberry Pi unit from stock at the moment. Several factors are contributing to this, and we thought it would be helpful to provide an update on what's been happening since we last wrote about this in October. So over the last six months, they've been working very hard to get Raspberry Pi products shipped. Uh, they've also mentioned that the uh, CPU on the Pi 4 uh, Pi 400, Compute Module 4, is more readily available than other older parts. So this is why we won't see some of the older Pis, but we, see, we will see some of the current models. So demand for Raspberry Pi products increased sharply from the start of 2021, so they have significant order backlogs for almost all products. They've talked about bots scalping stock, and they're encouraging you to use approved resellers, so something like RPI Locator. And the official advice is always buy from an approved reseller. So they get preferential access to supplies of Raspberry Pi products and the prices stay stable um, so you don't get these ridiculous prices, one of them coming up in a minute. My advice from a few videos ago, consider Raspberry Pi 400 or Raspberry Pi Pico and they set aside a certain amount of BCM2711 silicon for Raspberry Pi 400. So this is part of the reason that Pi 400s are still readily available, even from Amazon at a sensible price as well. And mentions the Pico about using for the maker side of it and there's a load of comments, so I'll put a link to the story. So on the subject of availability and scalpers and prices, uh, so this post from Facebook on the RetroPie official page, got to be smoking crack to sell it this price, and you've got to be smoking crack if you buy it for this price. So if we click on this, you can see this is a bundle, but it's not an official power adapter, HDMI cable, pretty ordinary looking case, some colourful heat sinks, and uh, if we click on it, the 8 gig, 8 in 1 kit, $349, just crazy. So still on Facebook, but uh, this is the Raspberry Pi and DIY Projects page. I really like the look of this one. This is really, really smart looking. Uh, so have a look at this. It's uh, Raspberry Pi 3B, I think, was in there. And it just looks really nice, really nice keyboard. Uh, you can see the case is all really nicely finished. It just likes, it looks like a proper piece of kit. and. Uh, if we go back, there is detail about all the bits that are in there. So waterproof Pelican protector case, three waterproofs outside for the power network and USB, Raspberry Pi 3 running Arch Linux, 11 inch screen with five buttons for control, full Cherry keyboard, gigabit switch, USB hub, 
It's got a battery pack in there, two external antennas. It, is, it just looks really cool. And you can see these flip switches with this sort of, <laughs> this very military style switch here as well. There's the case and the, uh, and the keypad on the screen with a couple of analog dials, which is nice. J just looks great. And one of the comments down below is where to buy this. Now, speaking of new Raspberry Pis, uh, and also speaking of the BCM2711, so relates to that story. Uh, this is Jeff Geerling's video, and uh, he did really well to spot this. So the Compute Module 3 is a SODIMM uh, connection, like RAM, and uh, it's the predecessor to the Compute Module 4. But this is a Compute Module 4S, so it is the same processor as you get in a Pi 4, Pi 400, Compute Module 4 but uh, obviously a different form factor. And uh, well, Jeff goes through all the details of what it's for, so it's definitely worth watching his video. He's gonna do a follow up on it as well. He's, he's gonna research it and give us more details on it. But if you thought it was gonna be a new Pi, which was a Raspberry Pi 5, unfortunately not. But nice to see a new product all the same. And uh, Lilliputin covered the story as well. And as Jeff said in his video, the Raspberry Pi Foundation hasn't officially announced the CM4S. And it's not necessarily a product for me, it's more for industry really. So a bit of an artistic project next. Uh, so a box of secrets. And you can see here that it looks very, very nice. Uh, and it's worth watching the video because you unlock it by touching a few of these sensors and saying the magic word and it unlocks inside. Uh, I won't play it, but I'll show a few bits. The way it lights up is really nice. So worth watching the video for that alone but then it releases these locks and it's uh, a Raspberry Pi Zero that's running it. You can see all the wiring and everything is put in here. And yeah, something a little special, something very different, but I really liked it. So I had an email from Tony Baldwin uh, who lets me know about various different things he spots and uh, this is a great one. So I've been looking around for the new Ubuntu 22.04 and most of them I couldn't find a version for, but this is Ubuntu Budgie Beta. Uh, and it's downloadable for the Pi 4. You can often get the betas for x86 computers, but not necessarily for the Pi 4. They usually take a bit longer to, to get to them. So if you scroll down, you can see there is a Raspberry Pi version. Nice to see they're singling that out. So let's download that. So it's from SourceForge. And as you can see, 2.2 gig, and I'll just let that download in the background. Next up, in my recent SunFounder 10.1 inch touchscreen display video, uh, it was mentioned about it not having a stand. There is a 3D printable stand. Uh, it's just a basic uh, 3D printed stand you can see here with this triangular bit, um, and you can stand it up on its own. And also looking around, I found this, uh, which is a Raspberry Pi tablet, but it looks like it's based on that exact same SunFounder display. So if we click through the pictures, uh, and you can see various different switches and things, but it's this one. This looks exactly the same as the board in mine. I've put it side by side uh, to have a look at my video and have a look at this. So this is just the back of it, so that would be covering over. Um, but there's a battery in there, there's a couple of speakers in there. Uh, I did notice that one of these, I think it was this bit here, was the speaker connection on this board. This is the sort of display board, and you can see there's a Pi 4, I'm guessing, in there. Yeah, it looks like uh, micro HDMI. So a few more additions that you can get for that particular screen. I really did like that screen. It was very, very nice quality. Saw so this come up on my feed, uh, Pi Hawkeye, which is a high quality camera. So 64 megapixel camera. Uh, looks like uh, just the ordinary V2 one from the Pi Foundation, but much higher resolution. And uh, you can see here, we set the bar and then we raised it ourselves. Uh, there are some pictures on here. Was it a pictures or a video? I can't remember what I saw, but it did look really nice. And I filled in a form to see if they'd send me one. And uh, I haven't heard back yet, but uh, I did like the look of the photo quality considering it is a, you know, a very small camera you can connect to your Pi. Yeah, some of these had really, really quite nice depth in it. So hopefully you'll see one of those in the future from me. And uh, this is just in here as a random thing. I, I think it showed up on my, I've got like a Google feed that recommends things to me. And uh, it was just all about the thermals on the Pi and I quite enjoyed uh, reading through it. Obviously the CPU, GPU is the main bit, um, but the USB controller and the RAM is sometimes um, 
accused of, of what heats up the pie a lot. And you can see here from this heat map, see this one is hardly impacted at all. I can't remember which bit this is, um, but uh, someone will no doubt tell me in the comments. But you can see various different heat sinks in here. It's quite, it was quite an interesting read, uh, even though it's an older story. Yeah, this one here, whether you need this one. I have seen this crop up in a few different things. Okay, so it turns out it's the Ethernet controller. Uh, I wouldn't have thought that would have got so hot. Um, but uh, thanks to this picture from etechnophiles.com, most people don't even mention what it is. And as we scroll down, they mention all sorts of things, CPU paste, and this very nice. So this looks just like this Dixon's Industries cooler that I got recently, but this is all copper. Uh, it looks all the same dimensions and everything else. So that case would look very nice with that on it. Oh, I've just thought of something that I meant to do earlier at the start of the video, and that's install a temperature monitor. Now, if you use the App Store built into KDE, I found the one to install on this, which was pretty good, uh, is P-Sensor. So if I click on that and hit install, it is a nice App Store on KDE and works really well. Okay, that's installed, so if I hit launch, and uh, it gives us temperature and CPU usage and free memory as well, which is quite nice. But also, if I close it down, it still remains in here, and you can just tap it on here, and you can get the information, and you can have that up, you can have a graph, there's all sorts of things. But I quite like the way you can just very quickly check the temperature of your CPU. I did try and find a way of making it show the temperature all the time, but I couldn't seem to find it in KDE, um, but maybe there is a way around it. Anyway, back to the news. Uh, this is from Reddit, and it was a Pi inside an electric vehicle charging point. And you can see it's got the Raspberry Pi logo on it. Always nice to see. Next up, software update. Uh, so the register reported this, Gparted 1.4. So there's a new version of Gparted, which is an excellent partition manager. Uh, and I've used it on the Raspberry Pi for a long time for expanding partitions. Some operating systems, you install them and uh, it doesn't use the whole space on your SD card or SSD drive or whatever. And this allows you to expand it, but also has loads of different features uh, to do with partitioning. Very, very useful piece of software, very reliable as well, never had a problem with it. And uh, also Lacquer 4.1, so we have a new version of RetroArch, uh, and there's loads of updates in this. I've actually already done a video on this, uh, just enabling the 3.5mm audio on a Pi 4, um, but I've also got another video coming fairly soon because the GameCube performance is really good on it. I've already done the video, uh, but it will be released sometime next week. Yeah, loads of updates, Raspberry Pi kernel updates, main kernel updates, and various different patches and fixes, but I did find that it worked incredibly well. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.